before I would really think about money so much that it puts me into such anxiety. But now, I have, I'm at a point in my life where I don't have much salary, but I feel abundant because Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Joyce, here to share with you my life story and my journey. Last week, I have shared with you about me applying as a part-time nurse to a new place and I am really, really loving it. So, the, the good thing is that I am meeting new people, learning new things, and basically just being in a new environment, which is always refreshing. But I wouldn't lie to you that there is some discomfort because the fact that the environment is new means that I don't know and I haven't gotten myself around everything yet that I have to really f ask a lot of questions and to accustom myself to the new practice in the place. But of course, the principle is the same because it's still nursing and a care home nursing. So yeah, I love the discomfort and it's always nice to be out of our comfort zone. So yeah, it's a good experience. So anyway, today I will be sharing with you the things that I have learned for having less money and for spending less on stuff. So before I apply to this new part-time work, I have been working only for strictly three shifts a week for nearly a year, I would say. And it has taught me so much with how I think about money and how I think about the time that I put in for work. If you've seen my previous video where I shared with you how much I earned in a year, and I think that is the best year I've had in the best year with it when it comes to earning in my five years here in the UK. So at that year, I think I earned about 60,000 plus pounds in a year, but oh, my take home pay is about 40,000 only because of tax. The following year after that, I've been cutting back on my overtime and that gave me less income. So before I would earn about 4,000 to 4,500 a month for doing overtime of two to three more shifts a week, which makes it six working days a week or five to six working days. But now I'm only working three to four shifts a week. And before I would even just do strictly three shifts, which my earning would really be basic, which is about 2,600 to 2,800. So now what are my learnings for that experience? First one, more money for investment. It might be a bit funny to say that when I was earning less, I had more for investment. That is because I have become really intentional of what I spend my money on. Before, I would be earning 4,000 to 5,000 pounds a month, but I would only get to put aside 200 to 300 pounds for savings. And that's quite fun, isn't it? Now that I'm earning only about 2,600 to 2,800, I'm putting aside up from 500 to 1,000 pounds. And it's crazy. <laughs> and if I take that principle, the same principle that I'm doing now when I'm earning more, I would even be saving a lot. So yeah, because I don't buy so many things out of impulse, I get to put that money aside for investments, which I put on for Vanguard and some investments in the Philippines as well. Next one, I do not feel compelled to pay for my luxuries. Before, I am so scared not to do overtime and I get really anxious whenever I'm not put for extra hours because I feel like I won't be able to live <laughs> with just 2,800 pounds a month. But to be fair, because my life is so simple now that I don't feel the need to buy this or buy that or go here and there whenever I'm off, I find joy in simple things, in being at home, just cooking, trying new recipes, and just going for a walk and a run or work out or just really spending my time with my sister or my partner, just, you know, talking and chatting and sharing some food that we made at home. 
made me realize that life is so much simpler and I don't really need a lot of money to be happy. It's nice to have a lot of money. I shouldn't be equating happiness with money. I'm just glad that after pulling back a little at work, I realized that I am happy with just a little. Okay, number three. I became smarter with my money and because I had to really be intentional with my expenses. So for example, first with the grocery, I would just really buy whatever I see in the grocery and I wouldn't really think of what I would be cooking. And at the end of the week, I, most of my grocery would be just wilted or I haven't used them and they're just gonna go in the trash after a week because I haven't really thought of what I wanted to cook and I would just end up buying whatever. So yeah, now I make a list and really plan what I would be cooking for that week. Also, because I'm smarter with my money, I don't just go online and just search for things that, oh, this looks cute on me. And now I just really buy things that I think would go well with other piece of clothing that I have. Although I still spend quite a lot of money on my leggings and my workout clothes, I am deliberate and I choose what I really need to buy and not just out of impulse just because it's on sale I don't buy it and at the end of the month it's just gonna be piling up in my wardrobe so yeah number four less indentured time this term indentured time is uh, I have read it for the first time in the book fast the millionaire fast lane if you haven't read this book I highly recommend you reading it because it will give you so much perspective on what it takes to make money Although I haven't applied the principles in my life, but yeah, it's a good read. <laughs> so indentured time is when you buy something out of credit with the money you don't even have. So you have to work for it and you're even selling that your time for the future to pay for this thing. So for example, you bought a nice bag or a nice car or whatever. So, and you don't have that money now to pay for it. So what you would do, you put it on credit and then in the next few months or years you have to put extra hours at work just so you can pay this expense that you have now so yeah because i don't have any loan or i don't really buy anything that's out of my capacity i don't have to put on so much work and i don't have to sell my time to pay for this stuff that i would have bought um yeah so that's it i don't say that having nice things is bad but i would say that always have nice things within your means and that make sure that it's really something that you want and not just because out of it's because of impulse or because it's pressure number five it saves me from diderot effect diderot effect is when you own something and it costs and it makes you go into spiraling consumption so for example you bought a new bag and then you realize that everything you own is really crappy and it's not up to the standard of this new bag so what you would do is you would update your whole wardrobe just so all your wardrobe would be cohesive and uniform with this bag that you just bought and yeah it just puts you in spiraling consumption and then until you realize that you've just upgraded everything in your house and you're totally yeah you've totally spent your money just to you know make up for this new identity you're having so yeah i don't really buy anything that is way out of what i already have just so i don't feel the need to upgrade anything so, it's not that I'm not upgrading, upgrading anything in my life, but I would say that I really think of the things that I would put in my house and in my life before, before I do it. So before, when we first moved into this flat, I thought that we needed more pans, we needed, you know, a lot of things to make it a home. But to be fair, whatever we have in the house are the things that I really use. I really enjoy using and the things that I really value so yeah whenever I add new things I think if I think I really think if it's gonna suit our lifestyle or does it really ref reflect the people or the yeah reflect our personality I have more time to enjoy what I already have so because I'm not doing more time more work I have more time to enjoy what I have in the house or what I have in my life 
and because I don't have much, I really make sure that whatever I bought in the house, what I really bring into the house are the things that I would really enjoy and use. I don't just buy things just because I saw, I saw them on someone and because I feel like they're cute and trendy. But at the end of the day, it doesn't reflect my personality or it doesn't reflect my value so it just ends up being left on the corner and when then whenever i see it i feel guilty for not using it so yeah i feel like i am now more deliberate and more mature in my purchases i won't say that i am enlightened <laughs> whatever but i would say that i'm in this journey where i am learning more about the things that really matter to me and the things that i value and lastly i have a clearer mind i would say i have a clearer mind because i don't have much stuff to think of i don't have much stuff to clean in the house because to be fair and to be honest when you see a clutter in your home it doesn't put your mind to rest it always feels like something is chaotic and it doesn't it puts you in somehow a bit of an anxiety and even though our house is not you know um aesthetically nice i would say that it's clean and it's just how i wanted it to be with minimal and least amount of time me least time for me for me to maintain whatever it is here and yeah i think i'm just really embracing this part of my life where i get to take a step back from work enjoy my me time without sacrificing my responsibilities my financial responsibilities to myself and to my family i'm just enjoying the time that i get to sleep whenever i want to prepare food try new recipes make time for reading books make time for spending it with my sister with my partner and with the people i love without thinking of money so much before before i would really think about money so much and it puts me into such anxiety but now i have i'm a point in my life where i don't have much salary but i feel abundant because i have time to do whatever it is that matters to me and i think that's what really is important isn't it even if you're not earning so much what really matters is what's inside what you're feeling inside if you're happy if you're content that's what matters but disclaimer i'm not saying that i don't want money i want it for my life because i want to be financially independent but i'm just saying that to satisfy myself i don't need a lot and i'm quite proud of that i'm quite happy to say that i'm low-key <laughs> anyway i don't know if i'm really low-key well that's my opinion i don't know i'm gonna ask my partner if he thinks i'm low-key anyway Thank you guys for sharing this time with me and I hope that you find value in today's video and for this little chat that we have and whatever your lifestyle is, as long as it makes you happy and you're not hurting anybody, I support you. And I'll see you again on the next video. Thank you.